tithing tithing use that word the next time you're at the bank see what kind of a stare you get from someone i'd like to contribute to my tithe uh, unless that person has a religious background they're going to look at you and say you what <laughs> tithing what's a tithe what does it mean what's the difference between a tithe and an offering and how is generosity tied to tithing some of the questions I want to talk about today on uh, transforming the world. We'll discuss these in a moment. In the meantime, my name is Pastor Greg. I'll be right back. The very first time the Bible mentions a tithe which is a tenth is when abraham gave one tenth to the priest malchizedek uh, he lived in the town of salem which eventually becomes the uh, city of jerusalem lot and his family this is the background lot and his family had been captured by marauders from the nation of elam so abraham chases them down and recovers all the goods that had been taken and he brought back his nephew, his possessions, and all the people living in his household. After Melchizedek blessed Abraham, Abraham then, he gives the priest, uh, the, the, this priest, Melchizedek was the priest and the king, he gives him one-tenth of all the goods that he had recovered. Genesis chapter 14. At this point, the idea of a tenth was seen as an offering. This was not something that God had required. It was basically an offering and Abraham seems to have set a standard here. Later, the tithe, or the tenth, was used, uh, it was actually, it was used to support the priests who served the nation of Israel. So the tithe has its origins in, in Abraham in something that he gave, but at that point it was not a requirement, it was basically just an offering. When it became a requirement, it, it, it God established it as a a requirement when the nation of Israel is beginning to move into the promised land. They were getting ready to settle there in what is now modern day Israel. And every tribe who was a descendant of Jacob were to receive a portion of the land. Every tribe that is except for those who were descended from Levi. Uh, these Levites who would serve as priests in this tabernacle would not receive any land as an inheritance. Numbers 18 verse 20. The Levites were to focus their duties and service in the tabernacle. That's that uh, sacred tent where um, these Hebrew people would worship God. And so the Levites, their responsibility was to make sure that all this worship happened. Uh, they, they were the ones that offered the sacrifices. They were the ones who were allowed to go into the Holy of Holies. You know, the, the normal uh, Hebrew person was not. And so... These, these Levites, their, their labors need to be focused on the work in the tabernacle, not in uh, uh, raising cattle or harvesting crops to, to support themselves. So God commands all the other tribes. He says, look, I, I want you to give a tenth. To Lord says, give a tenth to me. And these Levites will then use that. That's how they will live. That's, that's how they will be sustained. It's through what you guys give, what the rest of the nation gives, this tribe of Levi then would uh, would be sustained that way. Um, so a tithe then is what the people gave to the Lord in order to support those who performed the uh, sacred religious duties at the tabernacle. A tithe is used for support. That was the command of God uh, during the Exodus. Offerings, on the other hand, were things that went above and beyond the tenth. For example, it was an offering that the widow gave to the temple one day while Jesus was there teaching. If you recall, Luke chapter 21, she puts in two small coins representing all that she had. She had gone above and beyond. She had given a tithe, yes, but had also given an offering. It's an offering that Barnabas gives to the apostles one day. Uh, Barnabas sees the needs of the church and he knows of his excess 
And so he sells a field and gives all the proceeds for those in need. Uh, it, it was not a tithe, but it was an offering that the apostles could use as they see, frit, uh, see fit. It was freely given. There's a lot of debate today about tithing. Um, is it still required? Some even wonder if the structure of the church should change. Uh, the, the, today's some churches, their structure resembled the Old Testament model where a priest or a pastor is supported in the set apart ministry. Now, I know some churches who function this way and they have what is called bivocational pastors. There's a person who holds down a job, but also serves as pastor. Usually there's a team of them because, uh, you know, one person's availability to be the pastor of the church is, is severely limited because they're out earning a living. Those models work. Those models where you have a bivocational pastor, I've seen them work and they work very well. But what ends up happening is the rest of the church steps up to fill the gaps because there is no pastor per se, nobody in that uh, full-time set-apart ministry. On the other hand, I have seen churches work quite well where there is paid clergy, uh, you know, the work of the church, that pastor is expected to do that. That's their job full time. And in order to do the full time work of the church, the church supports them. Um, the, the, in that particular model, a pastor is not paid, but they are supported. Their ministry in, the, in that church is supported by the people of that church. And so it works. Regardless of the model set apart or bivocational clergy, the work of the church depends on the giving habits of the people, either financial giving or a little financial giving, but a lot of giving of the, their time. It, it still requires giving. Whatever model you may use uh, in, in, in the church life, there's still giving, a giving of your time or a giving of your finances. But in both models, there is a... Um, uh, the, the, the two of those have to work in harmony. You know, the pastor can't do it all just because you support them. Uh, you still need to give a, of your time, but you're also freeing up that pastor to give more of his time because you have given uh, financially to the church. So the one question in our self-evaluation section asks this, has tithing become a spiritual adventure for you? In other words, have you experienced the rewards that come from supporting the work of the church? Have you? Be it time or money, there is something gained in knowing that our contributions are changing lives. You either support the pastor and give a little bit of your time, or you give a whole lot of your time and support the work of the church. Um, but the reward there is the same. No matter how you give, no matter the church structure, your contributions, your generosity, if you will, is changing lives. Your contributions are rescuing people from hell. I don't know if you've ever stopped to consider that. Whatever it is that you give, time, money, or both, but whatever you are giving to the work of the kingdom is indeed rescuing someone from the gates of hell. I want you to keep that in mind the next time you plan to give. That your labors, your labors, your your time, or your, or your wealth, whatever it is that you are giving, is enabling a church to preach a gospel message that rescues someone from the gates of hell. That's the effect of your generosity. Well, we're going to talk some more about generosity tomorrow and transforming the world. Thanks for spending time with me. My name is Pastor Gray. 